Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click Plus PLC MQTT communication. Now, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So, what we're going to do, or first of all, uh, we will now look at the MQTT communication capability using our, our Click Plus PLC. Now, MQTT stands for Message uh, Queuing Telemetry Transport. And this simple publish and subscribe communication protocol does not take too many resources. Constrained devices with low bandwidth are ideal for MQTT. This is why it will work on things like a Raspberry Pi and it is uh, basically used uh, as the protocol for the Internet of Things or IoT. And now this protocol is not for remote I.O. or real-time de deterministic applications. MQTT is a good solution for applications that, that move data from hundreds or thousands of machine sensors to clients in many networks. Now we will be installing a Windows-based uh, broker called Mosquito and the Click Plus PLC will be one of the, the clients publishing and subscribing to the MQTT broker and Node Red will be the other client publishing and subscribing to the MQTT broker and each client will share the information. So uh, as you see here we have our two clients which is Node Red and our Click Plus PLC and it will actually be communicating to our broker which will be our Mosquito broker. So the first thing we will do is actually take a look at the Mosquito organization and what we're going to do is uh, download or show you where to download the uh, Mosquito Broker. And this will run locally on your PC that you have. So if you hit the download link, you will see there are a few different links here. And we are operating on a Windows-based machine. You can see it also will operate on Mac or, or Linux. So we have a, a 30 or 64 bit, so we would download this file right here. And then on, like I said, on the website, it actually goes through the actual installation of this software on your system. So we, once we have that done, then what we want to do is we would call up um, our services because you can run this as a service within Windows. And so here is my services currently running. You'll see my Mosquito Broker. You go and call it up in Windows 10. Again, all the links and information contained in this is available on our website, accautomation.ca. And what you do is just double click on that. And you can see here now we've had this set for manual. So that is how we set up our services. And we're doing it manual so we can actually see these messages coming in and out. Let's close that down. And then if we go to the, the directory of where um, Mosquito is, and what we'll do is we'll just call that up. It's actually in the D drive. We've installed that in the D drive under program files. And and under Mosquito. Okay. So now we're in the same directory. And if we just go mosquito H for help, you can see that we have a bunch of different options we can actually uh, start the broker with. Now the first thing we do is you'll see that we have a, uh, a configure and because we are actually communicating to the Click Plus BLC that's going to be outside or out, outside of this local PC here unlike Node Red client which will be running on the same PC. We will have to um, configure our uh, Mosquito configuration file. So if we call up that in a notepad, there is a file already um, downloaded when you download uh, the broker. And it, it's a configuration file, but it has all the configuration options available to you. But you see they're all commented out so that uh, you can actually um, add your own. So in this case here, we're going to put in listener 1883, which is default port for Mosquito. 
and allow anonymous, which is true. So that means that we basically are setting up our network because we are high behind a firewall. We can set this up so that um, we can communicate to it no matter where we are. So that is my configuration file. So in order to actually start our broker, what we would do is we would um, type in um, mosquito. And then we want to specify our configuration file. And again, we'll just specify the, the file that actually uh, is downloaded with the uh, unit that we just modified and showed you there. And then we want to uh, type in uh, this uh, for boost mode, which en enables you to actually uh, see the information on the screen as as the communication happens between the different clients and the broker. And that is the uh, command. So what you'll see is it's loading up. And then what happens is it's starting to communicate to the equipment already because I have that up and running. So that is my uh, broker and we're currently running that. So now let's, let's, let's look at Node Red. And Node Red now is currently running and it's actually um, uh, running in the um, a window here. And this is the user interface. Again, it's a browser based uh, graphical package as we uh, discussed before and available links are on our website for this. So the first, there's three different uh, packages here, or three different sections. The first is we're going to write some information called temp. Then we're going to read the temp, and then we're going to read an analog coming from our click plus PLC. And the MQTT protocol is actually already built into the network right here. So we're going to use the, the in and the out. Also, we have a HTTP request here, and we're using a um, HTTP request on Open Weather Map. And Open Weather Map gives me an API that will actually give me, uh, if I put in a, a certain parameter, it can return the data to me for the temperature I've asked for the temperature in Atlanta or the conditions currently in Atlanta. And so it gives me all this information here and you can kind of make it out. This is actually a JSON format. So that's what's bringing into Node Red. So basically, if I wanted to um, bring in the time and what we're gonna do this is every, um, every time we hit this timestamp, we request the information here. And this requested information actually gets the weather map data then we, um, we parse this as a JSON object. So once we have the JSON object, we put up a message. I'll just enable that, that we can actually see that. And then what we'll do is we go to a function and that function actually will then uh, set just the flow or the temperature or temp that we have for this variable as part of that message for the temperature. Once we have that, we can then, um, we can actually print that out again, and then we can set our temperature on our uh, MQTT out. And the MQTT out, we're gonna say it's node red. This is the IP address of the computer I'm currently using, and the default port is 1883. And the topic's gonna be temp, and the retain will be set for true. Now, if we were to look at this server itself, we can actually hit this and we can actually then specify, here's their server location, here's the client ID that we have right now, which we just called Node Red. And we're gonna keep this alive for 60 seconds. So, cancel that. And now we can see how this actually works by deploying it. And once we deployed it, we can call up our uh, debug node here and remember we have this payload and this payload so let's inject it and what you see is here is my number I'm sending which is 53.06 and you can see here that I have 
my uh, information coming from my first payload here that comes from that request. And that's basically all the information that we can uh, bring in to our click if we wanted to. So right now we're only bringing in that temp right now, which was what the function node does for us. So we're actually writing that temp. And then what we're going to do is the next step is we're actually going to read that temperature. So let's go back here. We'll turn that one off and this message node off. We'll just clear this and we will set this on. So basically our temperature, what, what we're doing is we're asking for the topic temp from our broker and the broker then returns it. So let's just deploy that. And then once we deployed it, you can see that we're connected and it automatically then fires off our value of 53.06, which is what the temperature in Atlanta is currently right now. Next, what we'll see is our analog value. And we just called it analog because that's where the broker is. And you can see that we are updating every second here of our analog value. So that is the click or that is the node red communicating MQTT. Now the last part will be our click itself. And here is our program. And so what we'll see is um, we have, um, we'll go to the left hand or the right hand side here under navigation. And under function, we can call up our our port settings here and port number one you can see we have an MQTT port here but we're going to communicate wirelessly so we're going to be using this port here we're going to call up our MQTT client and here we go right now so here's our client and the first thing we do is we enable our MQTT that sets up our server our server will be our IP address of our broker which is this PC right here we have a protocol which defaults to MQTT. Our TCP, our TCP port number, which is 1883, which is the default. Our keep a lifetime is going to be 120 seconds. Now it defaults to 60, but since we're going to read the temperature every minute, we'll put 120. Our connect is we put it as a C10, and then our authentic, authentic, uh, our username and password can be put into our broker if it requires it and that's part of our setup that we can turn on those options in our configuration file however we are not using the uh, uh, authentication so what we'll do is we'll leave that blank and we will put in our last will and testament which will actually um, signify to the network that you the click has been offline or online and we'll retain that topic and then we'll also put in a custom uh, client I, ID of Click Plus. This way we can see that message of Click Plus going back and forth within the broker itself. Then we have our user subscribe. So this is what we are actually wanting from our broker back into our unit. And in this case here, we're going to use SC8 which is our one minute pulse flag, the system pulse flag. And we're going to set up our error flag being uh, C11 and our error code is DS10. And then what we're bringing into our broker, our topic would be temp. That's the same information that we're actually setting in our node red to the broker. So now the broker knows that and we know and we're gonna to subscribe to the broker saying, when you have the new information or you have the information there, bring it to us every minute when I ask for it. So then we have, uh, so we get the temp. Then what we do is we, um, our payload will be in text format. So we're in text one to text 10. We're gonna put a 10 as the length, but you can have any one you want. And you can see here on our subscribe, um, we just have the uh, 10 different blocks that we can actually program in here. So right now we're only using the one. And then you can add this to the MQTT view, uh, text view which will allow us to see the actual text and, and hex codes that are coming back. Under the uh, publisher, you set it sets up publisher here. And we can actually have four different blocks that we can set for publisher and each block is gonna contain three different blocks of data. In our case here, we're only bring one. 
So we're going to take our analog value, which is coming from DF1, and we're going to set for retain. So we're going to tell the broker to retain this information. And it's going to send this out at, with this uh, bit right here, which is every second. So every second, as you can see a node right over here, we're actually bringing in that or sending out that analog value to the broker and the broker then uh, gives it back or gives it over to node red. It says, here's the new value. And again, uh, we have success, which is C12, C13 uh, is our error and DS11 is our error code. So that is everything we need to do for an MQTT setup. So once we have the setup, you can see here, I've uh, we don't need ladder logic, but we put some ladder logic in here. And you can see here that what we do is we always on and we take our text value, which is going to be our temperature, and we actually put it into an, a DF or a, a floating point uh, value that represents what we see right here. So in this case here, 53.06, which we already uh, set on our node red that it's actually bringing in. So now we have this value 53.6. We're taking our scaled value, and if it's greater than the 53, we're turning on an output. So that's this very simple program that we're doing. So if we actually um, look at the, uh, we can actually look at the hardware that we have, which is going to be our Click itself. This is our Click Plus, and what we have is our analog coming into here which is off of my uh, battery and my analog input right here. And as I, um, you can see, we are communicating wirelessly to our network right here through the antenna. So as I move my um, analog scaled value, you see the scaled value going up. As soon as I get above my uh, temperature, that's currently in Atlanta, it turns on an output. So very uh, simplistic uh, program that we have here. So if we go back and we can actually then monitor, if we look at our program, we can load data view. And on data view, you can actually see how we can um, see the information coming in. So my connected broker is on. You can see that my one minute uh, flag, bringing in the, the temperature. You can see uh, my error is off and my error code is zero. There's my actual temperature coming into my text fields. Then I have a one second, which is uh, publisher success. Um, so it's on. So that means that yes, we are publishing uh, uh, without any errors. Our error is off and our publishing uh, error code is zero. So everything's working as it should. And you can see my scaled analog input value that I have right now. So the other thing we had was our MQTT text view, which we can actually see here. And our text view actually will show both in text as well as in um, hexadecimal, or we can select which one we want. I like both so we can see both at the same time. So as we uh, adjust the temperature, we can do that. Now let's go back. We can actually look at node red again and we can inject another temperature to see if it's actually changed. And looking back at the click, um, you can see it's still 53.06. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.